got to get that closed in. How long is that going to take? I don't know. Probably take a day per side. And then you can close then you... in the ends, all except for the doorways. Two ends I can do in a day, and the two other side, the 40 foot sides, it probably take a day apiece. So then you have a whole pole barn enclosed. Right. Then I gotta make doors. I'm gonna have the door openings are 10 foot wide. And I'm gonna make two sliding doors five foot wide so that if I just want to open the door and walk in, I only have to move a five foot section. Mm -hmm. Move it over three feet and walk in. Or I can put a latch on them and latch them both together and move the ten foot piece all at once. And then you'll have sliding doors. And I'll have yeah, if I leave them hooked together, I have two 10-foot sliding doors on it, one on each end. And they're over to one side of the building. So you got a 14 by 40-foot space on that's there, and you got this one 10-foot wide by 40-foot long space that you can drive right straight through. So I can come driving down light road turn, come on my property, open the door, drive right straight through the building onto the 56 acres. You don't have to, or I can go around the building, uh, this 50 foot wide piece, I only got a 24 foot building on it, that leaves 26 feet that I can, that's on the side. Actually it isn't because I came four foot off of the line, then I got a 24 foot building so that takes up 28 feet so that only leaves 22 feet left but if you're going to drive by the building you only need 10 feet and I got 16 feet 2 feet would be underneath the drip, drip edge because my tin roof is, has overhang of 2 feet on both sides and one foot on each end. I put a barge rafter out on each end and let the roof come on out a foot over so I got overhang on mm -hmm. ends and sides. And so so all, all I got to do is put these side boards and battens on and I'm going to screw them on. I thought if I wait till spring when it's lighter and they've had a little time to cure, I'll run them through my plane and just take one pass off of one side because they're kind of rough like the bandsaw does them. Mm -hmm. They're not rough like a big ground saw would do them. The bandsaw makes them pretty, they're sort of, rather than being rough, they're more fuzzy than they are rough. So, um, and then I would leave that plain side out, and then it would, then I can put stain or some kind of paint on it. Linseed oil? Better because it won't be so fuzzy. The linseed oil or something? Well, I think I just want to stain them with some kind of. Cabot, good Cabot, uh, and have some. Uh, well, it's wood preservative with a with a stain in it, like you put on a deck. Preserve it. Only put have it stained so it's green or it's red or it's gray or something. Uh -huh. They have good wood preservatives with. With uh, that, they'll put a pigment in. So I think I'll do that, and I'll get it just a sprayer and spray it right on. 
so it's got preservative because with the overhangs on the ends and like that, that poplar, will, as long as it stays dry, it'll last forever. If it gets wet, it's going to take a shit just like anything else does. The only stuff that stands it's locusts or larch or something. Mm -hmm. 